Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I've got 10 great horror books for you by diverse authors. So as I said in a video I put up the other day, it's really important to me to talk about authors from a, a diverse range of backgrounds on the channel. And it's also really important for me as a reader to read books by authors from diverse backgrounds because reading for me is about experiencing different things, experiencing different people's lives and things like that. And I think, you know, if I were only to read books by, by middle-aged white men like me, um, I probably, you know, wouldn't get that breadth of experience, would I? Um, so I think it's I, I think it's something that's definitely worthwhile doing as a reader and definitely, you know, worthwhile checking in with yourself every so often and, and thinking, you know, could I be more diverse in my reading? It doesn't mean you have to be. And I'm certainly not saying that people, you know, should have a quota for the number of books they read by by people who aren't, you know, middle-aged, straight white guys. Um, but but I do think it's worth thinking about every so often. Um, so I've got here today for, for horror fans, 10 books that I've read um, by a, a diverse group of authors. And I think all of these books are fantastic. Um, I had I had trouble getting it down to 10, but I wanted to make it 10. I think I'm going to do some honourable mentions at the end um, where I talk about, um, you know, some other authors that, that either I've read and enjoyed or who are on my radar and I really want to read. OK, let's get into the list then. So book one is Queen of the Cicadas by V. Castro. Um, so V. Castro is a relatively new name in the horror scene, but one who's really growing in reputation and, and popularity. I think she's fantastic. Her books always have um, a real uh, kind of solid plots at the, at the heart of them, but really interesting and rich characters as well. Um, this one is no exception. So about a, a Latinx woman who travels back to her native Texas to uh, attend a wedding that's being held in a farmhouse where decades before some like terrible stuff happened and it's all wrapped up with this this uh, kind of folklore about this figure called the queen of the cicadas so all sorts of stuff going on in this book lots of flashback scenes about the characters uh, kind of youth and, and childhood um, but really wrapped up interestingly with with folk horror and some some real uh, kind of proper horror scenes as well um, so yeah a thoroughly enjoyable book that went in directions I wasn't expecting at all um, book two um, is uh, The Ballad Bal of Black Tom by Victor Laval. So this is a, an interesting book because this is a book that was written as a response to um, a story by H.P. Lovecraft called The Horror at Red Hook. So Lovecraft obviously is a, a giant of horror fiction um, and you know you will see him talked about a lot and he was an incredibly inventive um, and interesting writer and his, his influence on the genre is undeniable. He was also a terrible, terrible racist, like appallingly racist. Um, and I think that, that his racism often doesn't necessarily come over in, in his stories. Some of his stories, so one of my favourites by him uh, is The Colour Out of Space. Um, you know, that's just an, an interesting and enjoyable and, and creepy cosmic horror story. It's worth reading The Horror at Red Hook before you read um, The Ballad of Black Tom. Because um, the, the racism in that story is, is right in your face and, and really, you know, quite horrific. Um, and The Ballad of Black Tom, which is Victor Laval's kind of retelling of the events of, um, of the horror at Red Hook from the perspective of a, of a black character, is, is A, a better story. Um, so The Horror at Red Hook is, is a fairly early Lovecraft story, I think, and it's really kind of pulpy and, and quite cheesy, as well as being pretty objectionable. Um, the Battle of Black Tom is a much richer and more interesting story um, and has some, some fantastic characters and a really interesting portrayal of uh, kind of New York in the, you know, the early part of the 20th century. So definitely worth reading. Um, next, we have um, a collection which is actually actually six books. So that's The Books of Blood by Clive Barker. So Barker is a, um, a, a gay British uh, horror author who came to prominence in the 80s. The Books of Blood was the, the first stuff he published, really, and it's a, a collection of, of short stories. And they are fantastic, really inventive, 
um, really very graphic at times. So, so you know, he he's someone who completely embraces um, the kind of subgenre of, of body horror, um, and there's some very horrible stuff in these books. But they are fantastically well written often, um, and just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. Still remains, I think, one of the most important um, collections of of short horror fiction um, of the the second half of the twentieth century. Um, Moving on then to something that's probably more the the kind of fun end of horror, I would say, uh, and that's a, a couple of books by an author called Sergio Gomez. So the books are Camp Slaughter and Halloween Slaughter. So the first two parts of a trilogy. I think he's writing the third part of the trilogy at the moment. So these are uh, kind of uh, throwbacks to the slasher movies of the eighties um, about this this um, horrifically uh, gruesome character called Varius Carras who wears the faces of his victims um, and goes round um, you know kind of kind of slaughtering various people, but but is also kind of by day a mild mannered uh, mild mannered. Uh, kind of janitor type guy. I don't think he's actually a janitor. I don't know where janitor came from, but a, a mild mannered guy. Um, so really, a really interesting uh, kind of kind of contrast between the two sides of this character. But they're just really fun and enjoyable um, slasher books as well. So um, really, really interesting and play on uh, kind of like Mexican uh, wrestling um, uh, kind of concepts and, and themes and stuff like that as well. So yeah, really enjoyable. Um, Book five is is a book that is is not by any means enjoyable. It's a really um, difficult read, um, but I think a worthwhile read. Uh, and that's Manhunt by uh, Gretchen Felker Martin. Um, so this is a um, this is a book about a a future, so a kind of dystop- dystopian novel um, about a, a future where there's been um, a virus that turns um, turns men into uh, kind of like ravenous, um, lust, lustful beasts, basically. Um, and the women of the world are uh, trying to defend themselves from that. Where this book is really interesting, because we've seen stories um, told like that before, where this book is really interesting is that it weaves the experience of trans people into that kind of gender apocalypse narrative um, and does it fantastically well. Um, so as I say, it's, it's a difficult read at times. It's a very angry read. Um, but it made me, you know, really reflect on the way that that trans people are, are treated in the world today, um, as well as in the, this kind of horrible imagined future world. Book six is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. So um, Jones is an author who I've read, I think I've read three of his books now, and really enjoyed all of them. Um, I think The Only Good Indians is his strongest one, and his kind of themes of like writing about the lives of indigenous Americans, you know, really comes out um, in this book more than in some with others. Um, but yeah, a really interesting book that that um, talks about kind of cultural identity and things like that, as well as having a, a really chilling uh, kind of horror story at the centre of it. Book seven is Mexican Gothic by Silvio Moreno Garcia, uh, which is, as the title suggests, a gothic novel set in Mexico. Um, so uses tried uh, tried and tested gothic tropes to, to really good effect, um, but also weaves that in with, with a lot of stuff about kind of Mexican culture uh, and society and also about the treatment of different racial groups in, in Mexico. So a really enjoyable book, but there's a, there's a lot going on uh, beneath the surface as well. Book eight is Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark, which is a, a kind of really um, pulpy and enjoyable um, kind of sci-fi horror adventure, um, but where the, the, the monsters are the Ku Klux Klan, who are literally creatures from another dimension. Um, so it has a, a diverse group of people going up against these these creatures. Uh, just fantastically enjoyable, really exciting. As I say, it's got a really, a really great pulpy feel to it, but also some really interesting reflection on racism in America. Book nine is Poking Holes by Juan Valencia. So Juan is the host of the channel Play by Visions, uh, which is a channel dedicated to talking about transgressive uh, fiction as well as horror fiction. Um, this is uh, Juan's first short story collection, and it's phenomenal. It's really good. It's so dark and disturbing, though, um, that it definitely comes with uh, with, a, with a health warning. Um, there is a lot of very deep and nasty stuff talked about in this book, um, but it's well worth reading. And it, and it blends, uh, you know, kind of traditional horror tropes and things like that with uh, with more experimental styles of writing uh, to, to really great effect. I thought it was a fantastic collection. Um, the final book then is You've Lost a Lot of Blood by Eric LaRocca. Um, 
So LaRocca is best known probably for his uh, his novella, Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke, which was a really big hit. Um, I preferred this, uh, this other book by him, You've Lost a Lot of Blood, um, which weaves together kind of co- commentary on like virtual reality and stuff like that. It's got some really kind of deep, nasty bo- body horror stuff in it as well, which is quite... Um, quite uh, Cronenbergian um, in its uh, intensity. Um, but yeah, just a really enjoyable, interesting um, read that, that also talks a lot about uh, kind of queer culture and things like that. So that's the main 10 uh, done. Let's get into some honourable mentions. Um, so first, a few authors who I've read who didn't quite make the list. Um, so Alma Katsu, uh, who's a, a, a biracial Japanese-American author, um, who's written some fantastic books. I read her book, The Hunger, which is about the Donner Party. Um, more recently, she's published a book, uh, The Fervour, which is about uh, kind of Japanese internment during the Second World War. Uh, she's also got a book out about the Titanic. Um, so I think she's just a really talented uh, horror author. I'm really looking forward to, to reading more by her. Uh, completely different, but also worth a mention, I think, is uh, Ruth James White. So Ruth James White is an extreme horror author. I've only read one book by him, The Resurrectionist, which was unimaginably horrible. It was really horrific. Um, and I did enjoy, uh, enjoy is maybe the wrong word. I thought the, the really horrific parts were well done. The rest of the book maybe not quite so well done, but definitely worth checking out if you if you like uh, extreme horror. Um, and then a few authors who I haven't quite got around to yet, but really want to. Um, so Hayley Piper, who's a trans author, who everyone is raving about. So I've read one of her stories, uh, which was included in a short story collection I helped edit um, a few years ago, which I really enjoyed. But her um, her novels um, are certainly getting a, a great deal of, um, of good press on booktube. So I definitely need to try her work. Um, another indeed Indigenous American author um, Al Going Back um, is an author I really want to check out. Um, there's a few books that have been recommended by by him, um, and then one that I have somewhere in this pile of books here um, is The Devil Take You Home by um, Habido Iglesias, um, which is supposed to be fantastic. His other books are supposed to be excellent as well. Um, Coyote Songs, I think, is the other one by him that, that gets a, a, a lot of good good press. Um, so yeah, another uh, another author I'm really looking forward to reading soon. So I hope you found that interesting. Do let me know in the comments your recommendations for uh, for horror books by diverse authors. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.